Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the Dark Table from A to Z series. My name is Hal and in today's video we're going to have a look at the vector scope. You can find the vector scope in the scopes module. By default there's the histogram. Actually I think it might show the last thing that you've selected. If you're not familiar with the other modes then I invite you to look at the uh, dark table from A to Z series related video. There will be a link on the screen now. We're going to go to the vector scope and there it is. The vector scope shows the chromaticity without regard to either lightness or spatial data. What does that mean? It means it's going to show us how much there is in the photo of each color without telling us where in the photo that color is or how light or dark that color is. The vector scope is divided into roughly six areas. Of course, it's a continuum, but you could see the red, blue, and green here, so RGB. And in between them, there will be yellow, cyan, and magenta. All black, white, and uh, gray points are going to be completely in the middle and not visible here. For each color, the distance from the center represent chroma and the angle represents the hue. The graph represents color volume because we're going to see uh, the colors that are used more frequently in the image in lighter tones. So the darker it is, the less there is of something. And this would correspond here to our expectation. There is a lot of green and yellow you can see that in the image. There is some blue, which is the sky, and the rest is red, which is the rest, mostly the uh, houses. We can change the scale by clicking on this second button here. The default is logarithmic. If you click on it, it will be set to linear. Clicking back returns to logarithmic. As you can see, the linear scale is much smaller. You can move the module somewhere else and zoom in if you insist on using the linear scale. The vector scope can describe the image in three color spaces. The first one and the default is Ciel UV. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing these, but you can click on it to get it to JZ, AZ, BZ, and you can click a third time to move to RYB. The CLUV graph is the faster to calculate and is a well-known standard, while the JZ, AZ, BZ may be more perceptually accurate. As usual, I am reading from the manual for these things, and the manual doesn't mention anything about RYB. A quick look in Wikipedia shows that it's a subtractive color space based on red, yellow, and blue. If you're interested in using it, you can learn more about it there or from other resources. The hue ring that you can see here represents the maximum chroma of each hue of the current histogram profile. You can set the histogram profile in the soft proofing option here. There you go, right click, and you have the histogram profile. And you can choose whichever one you want to work on. Note that the hue ring is not a gamut check. The colors could very well be here within the hue ring, yet out of gamut due to lightness, because we don't see that here we're only seeing chroma and hue, but not lightness. You can always do a gamut check by clicking on this button here, and this one will show you the colors that are outside of your current gamut. You can as well right click on the gamut uh, check button, and you will get the same settings as the ones as we just saw in the soft proof of course you can set these things 
in any of them they will apply for both all right that's about it for the user manual slash technical details of the vector scope the next video will be a um, showcase session where we learn how to use it and see how we can take the most advantage of uh, its capabilities until then i hope that you found this video interesting and entertaining and i'll see you next time bye bye